What's up guys, Justin here with the TheRenderingEssentials.com back, back with another Inkscape new feature video for you. So you might have seen that Inkscape 3.1 was released earlier this week, so I just wanted to make a video talking about some of the new features contained inside of this release. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so there's a blog post on Inkscape's website where they talk through the different new features contained inside of this version. I will link to that in the notes down below if you're looking for more information, but I thought I'd kind of walk you through what I'm seeing, um, what's new, that kind of thing. Um, so first off, probably the biggest thing that was added in this version, which is something that I've been waiting for for a long time and I'm really excited about, is the new material library. All right, so the material library basically contains a number of different materials that have already been created by Enscape. So there's over 200 materials that you can download and bring into your models to use in your renderings. So um, this is definitely something that I'm really excited about. You can access those inside of Enscape by clicking on the button right here. So you're gonna notice there's now an option in here for the material library, as well as an option for the material editor, which has been changed as well. We'll talk about that in a second. But for now, you can access the material library just by clicking right here. You'll notice how there's a number of different material types. This works a lot like the asset library does. So you can see all of these different material types in here. You can also download them by clicking on them. So let's say, for example, that you wanted to download this Wood 04 and use it in your model. What you would do is you would select it, then you would click on the button for import selection. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna import that. And I must've had another one selected in here because it imported two materials. But then once you import them, you can find them in the in model section over here in your material editor. So if you go to in model, scroll down, notice how this wood 04 got brought into the model. Well now what I can do is I can just double click into my model and just start applying this material. So in addition, you can also favorite materials. So if you have something that you like, like for example, let's say you like this material, you could favorite it. Well, then it'll show up in your favorites list right here so you don't have to go looking for it. And so note that these materials are already gonna be set up with your different maps, which we'll take a look at in a second. So the second thing that you might notice is they've also edited the material editor or they've changed the material editor um, to a new look. So what it does is it makes everything just a little bit easier to get to and find and all of that. Plus there's a great new feature where you can import and export material packages, meaning that you can save materials and import them later instead of having to set them up over and over and over again, which I think is a great new feature for Enscape. I think it's something that, uh, I think it makes a ton of sense and I'm really excited about it. But um, to access that, what you would do is you would come over here into your material editor and you can see how all the materials in your model show up on the left-hand side of the page right here. Well, let's say, for example, that we wanted to look at this Wood 04 brick bond material that we just created right here. Well, now you can see how there's sections in here for your albedo, um, the tint color, the image fade, um, as well as spots for your normal map or your bump map or your displacement map, as well as your reflection map and giving you the option to adjust things like your roughness, etc. So you've got all of that over here. You've got different material types in here as well with presets that you can use in order to create things like carpets or foliage or other things like that. Um, so you can edit all of that in here. So probably the thing that I'm most excited about is you can see how with this wood material right here, there's a little uh, three dots if you mouse over this, well, if you click on this and you click on the button for export material package, you can save that material package for easy import in the future. So now instead of having to set that back up, you can import that. There's also an option up above to batch import. So to bring in multiple different material packages at once. So I do think this goes a long way towards making Enscape the tool that you can really build your workflow around because you can start building up that material library for easy access in the future. So another really cool feature, if you have an RTX graphics card is they now have support for NVIDIA DLSS. And so basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna improve your performance basically by rendering at a lower resolution. But then um, it, I'm not sure if it's upscaling or what it's doing, but it's, it's exporting a higher resolution image while rendering at a lower level. And so what that does is that includes your frames per second. So it makes your um, it makes your animations and your movements export a lot faster. So you can look up, you can follow that link on that page to learn a little bit more, including like what graphics cards actually have that. Um, I think you're gonna have to have at a minimum a 2060. So if you have the, like I have a 1080 Ti, so I don't have that feature on my graphics card. But um, in the 2060 and above series, 
um, so the 20 and the 30s, um, the RTX technology is in there. So you can read up more on that. It's really some cutting edge stuff. It's really kind of interesting, but all you really need to know is it's going to improve your performance and your frames per second um, without using up more performance on your computer. And just a note, if you do want to access that, you can access it by going into the general settings um, under rendering. There's an option for the RTX ray tracing, which you can see I can't check because I don't have an RTX card, but you would just check the ray tracing and the DLS box right here. So they've also added a feature where you can now group different panorama files together and so that allows you to showcase like multiple different um, locations or rooms or stuff like that. There's actually a detailed thread on this um, that you can get to just by clicking on this button right here that really kind of talks through exactly how all that's going to work. So if you are using panorama files this is going to give you the ability to manage those multiple different panorama files at once. So if you're a Revit user, so there's a material editor for Revit. I believe that's going to be a little bit different than what's in the SketchUp version. So um, obviously Revit and SketchUp work in completely different ways. So that's going to look a little bit different. I'm not working with Revit, so I can't demo that, but that is in there if you are a Revit user. So in addition, they've also added a number of different simplified assets. So the simplified assets are really helpful when you're in the early design phases because they let you kind of convey information without getting too detailed. So you can access those by going into the Enscape Asset Library right here. And probably the easiest way to get to that is just to look for the ones with the tag of simplified. So that's going to give you access to things like these simplified sunshades, these simplified people, um, furniture, other things like that. So if you're trying to do kind of more of a low poly type thing, so for example, let's say I wanted a placeholder building, I could just bring this in right here. So then if we were to render it out, so if we were to just click right here and load this in, so you can see how this is gonna give you the simplified building that you can use in order to create context or other things like that um, without you having to do a whole lot of extra work. So definitely check out those simplified assets. In addition, if you do have an RTX card, you can see how there's now um, there's now support for ray trace sun shadows. So that's going to give you even higher quality shadows um, coming off of your objects inside of Enscape. So if you do have that RTX card, that's going to be a definite improvement. You're going to see an improvement in the shadows as well. So if you do want more information about this, they are going to be doing some webinars about version 3.1, which you can find at the bottom of the blog post, which I'm going to link to below this video. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this new version of Enscape. So I'm particularly excited about the material libraries and the material editors, but I'd love to know what you think as well. Um, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.